Well, welcome. Good to have you with us this morning, whether you're here in person or joining us a little bit later on YouTube or at Greencroft. We extend our greetings. Um, Pastor Frank is still not feeling the best, and so uh, he will be joining us a little later in a video. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and begin our, our worship time. So at this time, we would like to go ahead and have our responsive reading for our candle lighting. It started with faith. Faith the cow, donated by a farmer in northern Indiana because of a great idea one fellow had. That emergency aid has to include more than a handout, but also a hand up, so that hard-working families can get back on their feet after the disasters of war, famine, and despair. And to invite them to become partners in healing. These families shared the animals that were born in barns and stalls around the world with others who needed help getting back on their feet. We light this first candle to shine hope into every corner of the world where there is despair and hopelessness. Now all together, it started with faith and it grew with hard work, dreams coming true because northern Indiana farmers were ready to impregnate cows overseas to a continent ravaged by war. Then it grew even greater by inviting others to join us so that today any number of denominations believe they have the idea first. And as long as God is glorified through all the cows, goats, pigs, chickens, geese, ducks, bees, and every other creature donated through Heifer International to the struggling and suffering. Let us continue our partnership with our ancestors in faith, as well as believers and people of goodwill around the world. This time our worship team will lead us.
And we'll share together in our responsive morning psalm. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, who is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up the people and gathers the outcast together as one family. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord determines the number of stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our God and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God with musical instruments. God covers the heavens with clouds, prepares grain for the earth, makes grass grow in hills. The Lord gives to the animals their food and the young ravens when they cry. God's delight is not in the weapons of war, nor God's pleasure in the speed of a runner. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear God and those who hope in God's steadfast love. Praise the Lord. At this time, we'll join together in hymn number 87, Great is the Lord. Sit down for this, Tim. This time, Phyllis has a children's story. All the kids, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. I see that you have spiky hair there. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, before we start, when we're done here and you go out for Sunday school, will you wait for me in the hall? Okay, I'll be there as 
quickly as I can get there. <laughs> I don't usually go quite as fast as your legs go. All right. About 90 years ago, and that was a long time, <laughs> that's a long time ago, there was a man whose name was Dan West, and he lived in, in Indiana, not too far from here, and he had gone over to Spain, and Spain, they were having a war over there, and the people, uh, you know, a lot of the food got destroyed, people didn't have much to eat, they were really, really in a bad way. And so Dan had gone over there, and he was making sure that he gave uh, food to the people. And he was giving milk to the children every day. And he thought, now, wouldn't it be better if instead of giving milk every day, they had a cow? Then they'd have milk every day. So he came, when he came back to Indiana, he talked to some of the farmers who lived near him. And they agreed to send some cows. And that was the beginning of what we call Heifer International. And so people will send money to Heifer International, and they will uh, make sure that people around the world who don't have enough food, that they have some animals that can help give them food. Now, it started out with cows, but it's not just cows anymore. In my barn here, I have some animals, but you can choose, pick one out, and we're going to just do one at a time. And when you pick yours out, I want you to tell me why you think that would be a good animal to send to people who don't have enough food, OK? Let's, let's start with, with Arlo here. OK, what did you, what did you get? A chicken. A chicken, OK, just a minute, OK. Um, I chose a chicken because uh, it, it has eggs, and th that, mean, that means it makes food and until it dies. That's right. So, so the, the eggs were something that they could eat. And do you know what else they did? When somebody got a little flock of chickens, they would share one or two of those with their neighbor. And so not only did their family, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> not only did their family have eggs, but now another family could have eggs. OK, Oliver. What did you find? A sheep. OK, why, how do you think a sheep might help people? Because of their wool. You're, you're exactly right. Their wool, when they uh, shear the sheep, they can sell that wool and then they can have um, some money to buy their food. OK, Peter, your turn. We'll just, just pick one. What is this? A pig. Oh. Why, why do you think a pig might be good? Do you know what kind of meat we get from pigs? Pork. 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 Okay, pork. pork. Bacon. Bacon. Okay, ham. Okay, so there are lots of animals, not only these kinds of animals, there are lots of other animals too, to share with people around the world so that they uh, will have enough to eat. All right, thank you for coming up today. You may take those puppets back, and we'll put them in the barn when we get in the back, OK?
Thank you, Phyllis. I want to read our scripture lesson from the Gospel of Mark. Um, I'll be reading from the Inclusive Bible, starting in Mark 1, verse 40. A person with leprosy approached Jesus, knelt down and begged, If you are willing, you can heal me. Moved with pity, Jesus reached out a hand, touched the person with leprosy, and said, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy disappeared, and the person with the disease was cured. Jesus gave a stern warning and sent the person off. Not a word to anyone, Jesus said. Go off and present yourself for the priest and make an offering for your healing, as Moses commanded, as a testimony to the religious authorities. But the person who had been healed went off and began to proclaim the whole matter freely, making the story public. As a result, it was no longer possible for Jesus to enter town openly, and Jesus stayed in lonely places. Even so, people kept coming to him from all directions. Well, this time we'll have... Frank's tape message. Ah, well, hi there. Here we are, a week from an extremely momentous occasion. I'm speaking, of course, of the Super Bowl. Uh, at this point, people who are real big fans of this morality play are, are lamenting the defeat of their team, maybe recently, maybe months ago or getting ready to cheer for their team which is in the game, or adopting a team that's uh, in the game. It's, it's all a lot of fun, and there, there's a lot of science that goes into it. Uh, of course, despite all the science, it really comes down to you know, who hits the hardest or who makes the play. All the same, there's a lot of thinking going on. You know, uh, one of the biggest dramas we'll see is the coin toss. Now, the real coin toss takes place long before, so the coaches know uh, whether they're on offense or defense to start the game. But, but uh, you might have noticed in recent years, it used to be when, uh, when you won the coin toss, you always elected to receive unless, unless there were really bad weather conditions and you were trying to figure out when you wanted the wind at your back in the fourth quarter, and then they would defer. But nowadays, more and more, coaches are choosing to defer the kickoff if they win the coin toss. Uh, the reason is, as far as I can tell, that analytics, that magic word, has determined that if you defer the kickoff and play your cards right, it can result in up to three extra plays a half and an extra two points. Now. That's, of course, averaging out all the games. It might mean absolutely nothing in that particular game. And if you do defer the kickoff, the other team may just run the ball down your throat, pick up a fumble and do it again, and the next thing you know, you're down 14 or 21 nothing, and none of that matters. But one of the things that's important is that you use the right language in announcing your decision. Now... Uh, a few weeks ago, before the playoffs even began, uh, one member of the Green Bay Packers, uh, I think his name is Jer Alexander, took it upon himself to join the newly appointed captains in a game against Carolina, in which, as the road team, they would call the toss. He wasn't authorized to, and he called the toss. Well, as it turned out, he won. And... He thought he was doing what the coach wanted. The coach wanted to defer. Uh, but when the referee said, what do you want? He says, we want to be on defense. Well, what that meant was, had the referee followed uh, what the player had said, is that they would have ended up kicking off in both halves and never received the ball and never got those extra three to six plays or that extra two points, considering that the game was won by a single field goal and was ultimately essential to the Packers at least making it to the playoffs and thank heavens defeating the Cowboys which is really the only point of the entire NFL season is getting to watch the Cowboys lose early in the playoffs after that all of us can relax and take it easy and know that all is well with the world the referee however said do you mean defer and Jer answered I, I guess so well 
he was suspended for a game afterwards because of his actions, because nobody appointed him God, and certainly he almost blew it. But it did bring up a certain point. First of all, you should do what the coach wants, and secondly, you better use the right language. And both of those things come into play in today's very brief scripture from the Gospel of Mark. You know, it begins, A man with a skin disease approached Jesus, fell to his knees and begged, If you want, you can make me clean. Now, in many of your translations, it will say that Jesus was moved with pity. I have my hand right here, not because I'm in pain, but because when the word, me, the word splagnos, which has got to be my favorite Greek word, splagnos uh, is the word for colon and uh, your guts. And Jesus felt compassion, if that's the word he used, in his guts. He deeply moved for this man with a skin condition, which made him unclean. And indeed, what he asked was, make me clean if you want. On the other hand, the common English Bible says that Jesus was incensed, angered. And indeed, there is a whole family of manuscripts. There are literally thousands of manuscripts uh, of the New Testament. But there are, there are, there's a whole family in which Jesus is not moved with splaganas, compassion, but furious, angry, incensed. Why would Jesus be angry with somebody who wants to be healed? You know, at the beginning of his ministry in the Gospel of Luke, he opens up the Isaiah scroll, gets to chapter 62, and says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And how the Lord appointed him you know, to proclaim liberty to the captive, captive sight to the blind. It talks about healing and liberation and all the things that go with the year of Jubilee. This is what Jesus says. He's come for, he says, today this has been fulfilled in your hearing. Uh, so what's going on? Is it anger or pity? Well, I think we can say at the beginning, at the very least... The player, the man with the skin condition, is going with the coach's choice, and he uses the right word. We may have to make a coin toss as to whether Jesus is angry or filled with compassion. But the man himself responds correctly and says, if. If, because, of course, what's really important in the midst of our prayers and our choices is attempting as best we can to do God's will, not our will. And so he does begin, if you want. And Jesus responds, I do want to. Be clean. And as it says instantly, he was clean. It's a tough choice. But one thing it makes clear is whichever one it is that Jesus feels, it is intense emotion. Intense emotion at the suffering of others. And that's really important. We can get so blasé and apathetic because we are inundated with so much media that the idea that there are people who are starving and struggling even in today's world, not just far away but close at hand, that there's food insecurity here, that there are people who need help, that we no longer feel that tremendous emotion. But if we do, if we do feel that, we can change the world. And as you all know, we have. With several of our worship resources today, we have reminded ourselves of what is important for our prayer focus, which is the celebration of Heifer International. The ecumenical international organization which provides hungry people with a hand up, providing them with an impregnated live animal in which they're invited then to share the gift of the new animal with another, but the animal providing food, uh, providing uh, perhaps wool for clothing or other resources 
giving the family dignity, giving them work, and allowing them to become more independent. And the origin of Heifer International, as we here in northern Indiana know, is that a northern Indiana farmer named Dan West was overseas during the Spanish Civil War as part of the aid and relief. And among, he saw that hunger was being used as a weapon and that all he had to give to children many times was powdered milk and there wasn't even enough. Choices had to be made as to who was desperate enough to get it. He knew that he had life and death in his hands and what he thought to himself was what these people need is not a cup, but a cow. Not a cup of milk, but a cow to help produce that milk because so many of them had lost their farm animals, their farms, their land, and were refugees because of this terrible civil war that was a precursor to World War II. And indeed, he went back to share his idea with Indiana farmers and telling him he didn't know how he could get these animals, first of all, and how he could get them then to the people who were suffering. But the people in northern Indiana, the brethren knew, they would give cows. And they would send their young people with the cows overseas in order to help uh, deliver them and to do any teaching or anything else that needed to happen. And that's indeed the beginning. So that what was a brethren idea and a brethren project became ecumenical and international so that nowadays many different denominations think they're the ones that invented it. He acted out of deep emotion to bring healing and hope to outcasts, making them not poverty-stricken, but dignified people working for themselves. Now, Jesus tells this leper, don't say anything to anybody, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice for your cleansing that Moses commanded. That would be the testimony, he said. And indeed, that's what the law of Moses calls for. And that's probably part of our instructions as well from our coach, to work as we can within church structures. Heifer International was part of the Church of the Brethren. Towards the end of World War II, there was a great movement towards creating ecumenical structures where churches, instead of competing and accusing would work together, recognizing their similarities and working with and around their differences in order to be able to accomplish even greater things. And in the same way, we were able to share that gift so that it's something much greater than who we were and what we are. Uh, and uh, this welcome that we now continue to share because of that original idea beginning with tremendous emotion, a response as many of us would have of either anger or compassion or a bit of both to the fact that people are still hungry in this world today because of the evil that others are doing, uh, that our response has to be, how can we bring shalom, peace, wholeness where there is want? Well... Thinking again about football, and as you know, the Super Bowl this week is between the Bills and the 49ers. It wasn't that long ago that the same two teams were playing. That was back in 2020, bare weeks before the whole world changed with the coming of the pandemic, with isolation, with the cessation of so many opportunities to minister with having to pull back from the things that we did that like with Jesus involved touched Jesus touched the man that was unclean and he was not made unclean by touching the unclean man he instead made that man clean and we ourselves when we're able to reach out with our ministry of touch and caring widen the circle and bring people within and share and for a time it's so hard to think of the world changing so much that we couldn't share communion we couldn't have love feast we couldn't go on work trips we couldn't go out and uh, accomplish charitable things the way we used to 
because we couldn't be with each other. It's so hard to think back that only a few weeks before there had been a football game where so many people gathered. And I remember one of my strongest memories now of what happened before uh, was, uh, uh, was visiting one of our dear people who we lost right near the beginning of the pandemic, Sue Higgins. Sue Higgins, who struggled with vision problems, with respiratory problems, and so many things, but she loved her pro football, and she was just trying to decide at the time, who should she root for, the 49ers or the Chiefs? Because both of them had, in the words of Chuck Berry, a brown-eyed, handsome man as quarterback. She liked both quarterbacks. They were both very talented, and they were handsome. And I remember that four years ago, she decided she would root for Patrick Mahomes because maybe he was just a little better looking. Those are fond memories. Another world. And it reminded me, she didn't keep silent. She let us know exactly who she was going to root for and why. And she was so very excited in the same way that she was very excited about her faith and would always talk about the strength she drew from Sunday school lessons that she read when she could no longer teach, from scriptures that she could hear uh, on audiobooks when she could no longer read, uh, and, and the power that the word had for her. And Jesus discovered that despite the fact he told this man to be quiet, he was not quiet, that it was necessary for him to share the word of what God had done. Hundreds of years ago, the English saint, the venerable Bede, one of my favorite writers, said, in the performance of this miracle, Jesus requested silence, yet it did not remain concealed in silence for long. So it is with the called people of God. While following his precepts and example, they may prefer their responsible actions to remain unspoken, Yet for the benefit to others, providence may allow them to become known, contrary to their own wishes. The brethren have always had a hard time beating their own drum, tooting their own horn, and letting people know the great things we have done as such a small denomination that have been world-changing with Hefford International, Church World Service, and CROP, and many other ecumenical organizations which we began and which now are shared. And I know that many of us give in so many ways and serve in so many ways, and we don't want to talk about it, and we don't want to brag. But you must not resent it when somebody speaks for you because people need to know that in this world in which some seek to inflict suffering, there are people of goodwill from many faiths, from many walks of life, who seek instead to build, to grow, to make things better. Because they too, like Jesus, were moved with pity from deep down inside for what was going on. And were also maybe just a little angered that in this world there are people who want this to happen. And both are incentives so that the world can be changed in the manner that Jesus wants. Flip a coin. Do you want to act out of anger? Do you want to act out of compassion? For whatever reason, we're called to act because of our faith and follow the coach's instructions. If you want, you can make me clean, the man says. And we say, Lord, if you want, use my hands, my heart, my eyes, my life, and let me, let us, let all of us make a great change in the world because of your instructions. We're not pushing ourselves forward to become one of the captains and call the toss. But we are waiting to be appointed and looking for the opportunity to make the change 
that God needs. Yes, to the if you will. Yes, God will make us clean. Yes, the world can change. And yes, I'm going to watch the Super Bowl too. Next week, amen. This time we'll sing our sermon hymn, Move in Our Midst, number 418. offering statement. Our prayer focus, as well as the focus of our children's story, is Heifer International, the worldwide charity that we founded here in northern Indiana. Not only did local Hoosier farmers donate the cows when the plan was first conceived by Dan West, but they also sent some of their young people overseas with the cows to war-torn Germany. There they saw firsthand what war had done, and what a difference this act of peace and reconciliation can make. Now Heifer International is an ecumenical charity, but one of the charter's rules is that a member of the Church of the Brethren must always sit on the board. Rather than get too proud of what we have done, we should use this knowledge to spur us onto greater things in the future, knowing God has used us, one of the smallest of denominations, for great things in the past, and will continue to do so if we answer the call. Let us give thanks as we celebrate our offerings that God isn't through with us just yet. Let us share together in our unison offering prayer. We thank you, God, who free gives freely for using our natural bent for giving as well as our love for sharing animals and inspiring us to call into being something much greater. Together. We are grateful to have had a part in the founding of Pepper International. And we continue to partner with believers and good people around the world in this ministry of sharing life, love, 
and peace. Bless us now, God of glory and might, that in a world filled with war and hopelessness, we remain a light shining in the darkness. Bless us as your giving people. Amen. This time the worship team will lead us in their benediction song. Partner together to change the world. Amen.